Now, something we've danced around a bit throughout the course, but not explicitly stated, is the idea that it's not prices per se that matter for decision making, but actually it's the relative prices that matter. What this means is that what we're really doing is comparing the price of something to the price of something else. In effect, we're comparing the number of dollars it would take to acquire more of good X to the number of dollars it would take to acquire more of good Y. So once again, we're talking about the opportunity cost. So what are those two goods that we're comparing whenever we buy something? Well, one of them is obviously the thing that we're thinking about buying. The other is typically a substitute for that thing, but more broadly, it's whatever you would have done with those dollars instead. So once again, we're talking about the concept of opportunity cost. For example, suppose you're thinking about buying a brand new M1 MacBook Air, which retails for $999, or a new MacBook Pro, which retails for $1,299. So let's just put this on the board. So the MacBook Air is $999, and the MacBook Pro is equal to $1,299. The relative price of the MacBook Pro in terms of MacBook Airs is going to be equal to approximately 1.3. So one MacBook Pro is equal to 1.3 MacBook Airs. And I got that number, this number here, by dividing 1,299 divided by 999, and that is approximately equal to 1.3. So the question you should be asking yourself if these are your options is a MacBook Pro worth 1.3 MacBook Airs? Which would you rather have? Now I know 0.3 MacBook Airs might seem a bit strange. You can also think of it in terms of the quality of the device. Is a MacBook Pro really 30% better than a MacBook Air? And if it is, then it would be cheaper for you to buy the MacBook Pro. Alternatively, you could think of this in terms of your rent. So let's suppose that your rent was $700 uh, per month, let's say. Okay. The MacBook Air can be had for the price of 1.43 months worth of rent. The MacBook Pro can be had for 1.86 months rent. And so what you would be doing is comparing the relative price of the computers to your opportunity cost if your opportunity cost was paying rent. As another example, let's suppose that you have two different qualities of apples. We'll call them organic apples, and then we'll call them, let's say, standard apples. And let's say the organic apples cost $6 uh, per pound, and the standard apples cost $3 per pound. The relative price of one pound of organic apples is equal to two pounds of standard apples. Now, it's time that we round out the laws of demand with what we call the third law of demand. Sometimes this is referred to as the Alchin Allen effect, named after Armin Alchin and Bill Allen, the authors of your textbook. And what they state is that adding a fixed or constant cost to two substitute goods will cause consumption to shift toward the more expensive good. Okay? <clears throat> so adding a fixed cost to uh, two substitutes will cause consumption to shift to the more expensive good. Let's do this in, in an example. To see how this works, let's consider our Apple market here. Now remember, we said the relative price here
of organic was equal to 2 standard. In other words, for every pound of organic apples you purchase, you give up the opportunity of purchasing 2 pounds of standard apples. Let's suppose that it costs $2 to ship a pound of apples, whether those apples are organic or standard, from where they are grown to where they are consumed. What does this do to the relative price of organic apples? Well, let's think it out. Let's figure it out. So, what we would do is we would add $2 to here and we would add $2 to here. So, with shipping, the total price of organic apples would be $8 per pound. And with shipping, the total price of standard apples would be $5 per pound. Okay, so now if we calculate the relative price of organic apples, we would notice that 8 divided by 5 is equal to 1.6. In other words, the relative price of organic apples has fallen because of the addition of a fixed cost to both goods. Because the relative price has fallen, you now sacrifice fewer standard apples every time you buy organic apples. And because of this, people will be more willing to buy the organic apples than they were before. Now, I should clarify something. Adding the shipping cost will reduce the quantity demanded for both organic and standard apples. But it will reduce the quantity demanded for standard apples more then it will reduce the quantity demanded for organic apples. Or, to put this another way, fewer apples in total will be consumed by people due to the shipping costs, but a greater share of the apples that are still consumed will be organic apples.